Today we're going to be going over uh, an increasingly you know, popular topic. It's going to be how to powder coat your stainless steel tumbler. Um, if you've never tuned in one of these before, we want it to be as interactive as possible. So we have Matt over here on the computer, another one of our, our Eastwood uh, fabricators. Uh, he'll be answering questions or he can be shooting them over to me. Uh, but today we want to go over some of the challenges that you're going to face in powder coating a stainless steel tumbler. So we'll start off, uh, the stand is probably going to be one of the most important parts of it. Obviously mine I just quick whipped together out of some scrap aluminum I had sitting around. Uh, but it gets the point across and it makes it really easy for me to show. So obviously one of the things I can show right now that's neat is the progression from your basic, you know, kind of generic stainless steel tumbler that everybody has to, I mean, this is just real quick. This is our bright red powder. Um, so you can see quickly at a moment's notice, you can, you know, set yourself apart from everyone else, you know, around you, you know, which one's yours uh, and go from there. So one of the first things I'm going to do is this particular cup, I've already wiped the whole thing down with pre. So I want to make sure not to touch it, not to get my fingerprints on it because all that kind of stuff can mess up your powder. So I'll quick throw some gloves on here so I can walk you through what I have on here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll quick pop it off and you'll see I have a wad of aluminum foil up there just kind of jabbed at the top of the stand. The reason I've done this is it just gives you that much more contact point inside the, uh, the cup or the mug uh, for the ground to go through to be able to track the powder. The next thing you'll see is I have built a movable stand on here so that way while the cup is sitting down you have a nice flush surface because one of the questions I get from time to time is how do you make this nice crisp edge here because one thing I have to make a disclaimer uh, with our powders uh, there none of them should be anywhere where food's going to come in contact with where your lips going to come in contact with none of them are FDA approved but there's you know outside where it's just hand touching they're perfect uh, as because as you can tell you have a nice lid on these things so that, you know as long as you have a nice crisp edge you don't have to worry about ever having it get into the food so it's all external and that's it it's just for appearance so I've made this stand because it would be very hard to sit there with a fine line, high temperature tape and get it all the way around uh, without, you know, having any differences with it, you know, getting to stick. So being able to set it down flush on here gives that. And then obviously with powder, you can't touch it once it's been powder coated because you'll knock it off. So what I've done now with mine, mine's very rudimentary. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there who have really nice designs where you can actually spin it so it's nice and smooth and it drops it down slowly. Uh, some guys have pins where you just pull a pin out and again the plate drops away. Mine was real quick, just kind of slapped it together, get this video up because I don't do this a lot. Uh, if I did, I would build one much, you know, it goes quicker. And one of the most important things I do on here is if you can see, I do have a shop towel, you know, a paper towel, because I don't want to go straight to the metal in case the metal's not quite straight, whereas the lip on this is, I might have a gap. So this gives me just a little bit of cushion. Uh, to give a nice crisp edge and that crisp edge uh, is something you absolutely need. So I put that on there, they're disposable. You'll see in a little bit when I'm done powder coating it that it's very easy to just rip it and get it out of the way. So that way when you go in the oven, there's no fear. Um, so again, most important while I have it here, talk about it, get the pre. Uh, it's, our, it's a wax and grease remover and it thoroughly cleans the surface from any contaminants that are going to affect your overall powder job, you know, and give you a nice uh, smooth appearance to your powder when you're all said and done. So we'll quick, we'll, we'll go over to uh, the powder coating area and we'll get this thing set up so we can show you kind of the steps behind it and what I do uh, when I'm powder coating. Get this over here, grab the powder. Today, uh, the person who's having this one done has uh, requested a metallic purple. So we're going with, uh, today's is the hot coat uh, purple metallic. So it should turn out to be a really nice color. on there, get the ground clamp onto our base, so that way it's going through. And at any point, make sure if you have any questions, you shoot them out to Matt, so that way he can read them over to me if we need and uh, get them answered here live on the video. So let's start off with some powder coating.
One thing I like to do is I like to uh, quick grab a flashlight, see how my coverage is, because usually it'll, you know, kind of give you an indicator if it's a little bit light somewhere, if it's not, you know, fully covered. So I usually look around it. One of the places it's easy to miss it on is right on the lip, uh, right at the edge, just because, you know, it's down low and you're hitting more in this region up around the center. So a little spot I missed right here is quick touch it up and that should get me the coverage I need. One of the things you always want to have with your powder gun is you want to have a regulator right on it because uh, the pressure you're looking for is anywhere between about 5 to 12 PSI is the sweet spot depending on the size of what you're doing and having it right at the gun allows you to set it right there. You don't have to worry about setting up for how much line pressure you lose for the distance in the line it just makes it super simple. Uh, another good thing to have depending on where you're shooting would be uh, an inline moisture separator right at the gun. The reason I don't have it on here is we have a really good drying system here so it's not really necessary but certainly uh, one of the downsides to, or not downsides, but moisture is, a, uh, is an enemy to powder coat. Same with paint, so you don't want it making it all the way through. Uh, so real quick, now I can go over why I built the stand the way I did. You'll get, you guys will see. Because right now, if I were to put this in the oven and bake it as is, when you go to pull it out, the powder is going to be stuck to this edge that it's sitting on. It's going to be stuck to the part, and that's something you can't have. So I can just real gently unclip the, uh, the vice grips and then as you can see now my base can drop away the vice grips aren't there you can see that as there's a really nice clean edge on here you know indicating you know there's a nice clean edge up on the uh, actual cup itself so then I'll just come back in here I could do it with scissors but I don't have any so just, it's easy to tear it get out of the way and now you don't have to worry about when you put it in the oven so Go ahead and get this in here. The oven's been preheating for a while before we've even started, so it's sitting at right around 400 degrees. The perfect temperature to be able to bake this powder is going to be 400 degrees for roughly 20 minutes, and that's actual part temperature. So one thing I'll be keeping an eye on is the part itself and see where it's at. Get that in there. Let it start going. And I'll come back and see if there's any questions over here from Matt. Yeah, we actually have a, a handful, some good ones here. Okay. Um, so we had a question about, does the uh, heat from the oven, does it affect the insulation of the cup? That's a good question. Uh, and as of what we've seen so far, no, because uh, the, the way the insulation is designed on these, there's nothing actually physically inside of the cup. It's just a double wall design. So it's relying on the pocket of air to become your insulator. So putting the cup or putting the cup in the oven, all you're going to do is just temporarily during the cure process, heat up that inner part. That's all you're going to do. It'll cool back down. Um, I haven't seen any degradation from any of the cups that I've powder coated. I've done this one. I did one of the, the, uh, the screw down style ones for my wife, put our clear coat on it over a stainless steel with a, uh, a vinyl behind it. And it still to this day holds uh, the cold in just as well as mine, which has never even been touched. So I'd say it's, it doesn't do anything. Um, another one we have is, um, is there a recommended material to use as a stencil if you wanted to leave the stainless design or lettering? That's a good question as well. Um, one of the things you want to look for is you want to look for a vinyl that is designed for high temperature because if you grab just any vinyl, uh, they don't all handle the temperature correctly and they can actually slide a little bit while they're in the oven. Uh, I came across this when I did the one, uh, the, the flask for my wife. Uh, because I couldn't find the vinyl I wanted in high temp, so I took a gamble. And for the most part, it's perfect. Most people can't tell. There's just a little sag in the, uh, in the vinyl. If you look closely at it, it moved just a little bit down, but it's very, very difficult to see. So there are places out there that sell high temperature vinyl, um, and then there's some computer-controlled uh, cutters that are relatively inexpensive at you know, your local um, craft store uh, that would allow you to cut out designs of your choice. If you do use the stencils, uh, one of the questions I get to is when to peel it off. Uh, so we recommend leaving the uh, mug in there for the entire uh, cure process, letting it cool down, and then roughly when it's you know just cool enough to touch, that'd be a good time to peel it off. That way it's still warm, it's still supple, makes it easier to get the, uh, the vinyl off. Uh, another one we had uh, in the same realm um, is they asked, uh, can, can they use the, uh, this process to refinish decorative items in their home? Okay, that, that's a good question as well. Um, they asked if you can use this to refinish decorative items. 
powder coating is not limited to metal items. You can use it on pretty much anything uh, that can withstand the cure temperature. Now, obviously the powders fluctuate a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, your go-to temperature for most powders is going to be roughly 400 degrees. So if the item you're powder coating can withstand that temperature, you can certainly uh, powder coat it. I mean, you can do glass, uh, you can do vases. We do have some examples over here we can always pull out of glass that we've done that makes for some really neat stuff. I'll quick go grab one just because of how dramatic it is. So these are a really nice representation of exactly what you can do with our powders. So each one of these was done with you know our translucents and you know when it's all said and done it almost gives a stained glass look. So certainly anything around the house that can withstand 400 degrees like this glass can be done with powder coat. That's all I have for right this second. Okay, let's go check in on the mug and see how it's doing then. Mug sure looks like it's flowing out nicely. You guys want to come take a peek? It's nowhere near done yet, but certainly flowed out very nicely. So we had a question um, about the, the glass, you mentioned about the glass. Someone asked, um, how does the glass get charged to hold the powder? Or what's the process for powder coating glass? Okay, excellent question. Uh, so actually, uh, the question was if you can, or how you charge the glass. And you actually don't have to charge the glass at all. So how this was done was actually done uh, by putting the glass into the oven, uh, bringing the glass itself up to approximately 400 degrees, and you bring it out while it's still hot, you, you don't have to apply any charge at all. You can just hit the part directly with the powder. And because the part's already up to temperature, it's gonna flow out right away, and or begin to flow out, not completely, but begin to, and stick to the part. So that way when you're done curing it, or done coating it, you can put it back in the oven, bring the part back up to temperature uh, for the 20 minutes and cure it. Good. Um, let's check here. Okay. That's the, only, that's the only questions we have so far. Sounds good. Well, uh, hopefully this was uh, very instructive for you guys. If you want to be able to take your, your uh, stainless steel mugs and tumblers from bland to, uh, to all the way, you know, something that has some pop, you can do regular colors, ombres, where you can do one color up to about the curve, finish it with another one. Uh, as some of the people have asked, a high temperature stencil so you can peel it off, leaving the nice stainless uh, looking through. So as we go out for the day, let's take a look at the, uh, the mug one more time. Can that underhood light shine in there? Sure, the underhood light can certainly shine in there. Where's it sitting at right there? Let's see if I can get it in there correctly to get you the light you're looking for. Uh, we had another question come in um, here at the end. Can you mask off areas that you don't want to get coated? I know you, uh, you covered it a little bit, but... Yep, yeah, you certainly can. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, you can either do it with uh, high temperature tape uh, for areas that you're not trying to get nice, necessarily clean edges. You're just trying to tape it off. Uh, or you can also go ahead and you can use uh, high temperature vinyl. So that way, uh, you know, there's areas that don't have any powder on it. Um, if you're doing things other than mugs, we also have high temperature silicone plugs that can be put in holes. Um, but certainly it's very easy to be able to stop it from getting powder on it. So make sure you tune in next time. We always look forward to having you here in the Eastwood Garage. Thanks for tuning in.